That Rhonda better keep an eye on Jeff. <clears throat> I, I, I was thinking today about Abby's uh, affection, I guess you could say, for Jeff. And I, 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 she likes a lot of people, but I've never seen her like anybody as much as uh, she does Brother Jeff. But she, she actually uh, just loves him to death. But uh, uh, you pray for us tonight. I, I, I apologize for being the one to stand tonight. I... Uh, I didn't eat supper tonight, and Tina asked me why, and I said, I think I'm going to have to have to preach tonight, and I thought she was going to stay at home. <laughs> <coughs> uh, Brother Lance has ruined her, and uh, uh, but I, 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 I told Brother Lance, I said, I don't want to take over, but I, I, and I said, uh, he said, it's up to me. I said, no, it ain't. It's up to the Lord, uh, and uh, I said, if I could get out of it, but I could, but I've been preaching uh, to the church about obedience, and if I was disobedient, I'd be a liar, and I don't want to do that, so, uh, but that's what we're going to, so I told Brother Lance, <clears throat> he said, it's up to me, and I said, no, I believe it's up to the Lord, and I know Lance knows that too, I, I helped in a revival a few years ago, and it was me and another preacher, and I won't tell where it's at, and we just kind of alternating nights of preaching. It's kind of getting mid to late week. And I, I had a message uh, that God laid on my heart, just a burning message. You know, one of those that you're so excited to get to preach. And it was my night to preach. And the pastor leaned over and said, I want the other boy to preach tonight. And I said, whatever. Uh, and it was awful. And, I, and the, boy, the other preacher even told me that. He, said, he told me after church. He said, you're supposed to preach tonight. I said, I know it was like that. So I, I believe it's up to God. We need to be very careful. We need to be obedient uh, to what he has uh, for us. And uh, I, I, I hope I never take that role uh, of deciding who preaches because I learned a lesson that night, and that's probably been uh, 12 or 13 years ago probably, but I learned a lesson that night that uh, uh, the man that has the messages and the man that needs to preach. So that's what we're going to try to do uh, tonight. But uh, I'd like to say to Mount Olive Choir, uh, I, I always sing in the choir, uh, but I love to listen. I tell you, this week that's what we've tried to do. Y'all sounded the most beautiful tonight, and I think that I Am is the most beautiful song uh, that y'all sing. And that, it's just such a touching song, and y'all do such a wonderful, wonderful a job on it from now on when we sing that I'm sitting down and listening it, it, it's awesome it's, uh, but it's I, I thought of this it, it, it sounded awesome but it's because we're singing about an awesome God uh, the awesome God and, and I'm glad I know him uh, tonight and I, I know I'm glad I've tasted uh, uh, of that water and I've never thirsted again uh, and, and I'm, I'm so thankful that I know him tonight if you have your Bible, turn to Psalm 84, if you would. Psalm 84. That's where we'll be trying to take the message from uh, uh, this, this evening. You pray for us. I always say that, and I don't say that to be repetitious, but I mean it. But uh, I want you to pray for us tonight. <clears throat> but I, I want to say this. I, we, Sunday evening, we were, uh, went home and we were reading Psalm 85 uh, because it, it deals with revival. Uh, and while I had, had my Bible open, I thought, well, I'll go ahead and read Psalm 84. So uh, uh, we didn't do that with the intention of preaching from it, but we thought about it several times in the last day or two. And <clears throat> this morning, uh, uh, I, I've been working a couple days a week, Brother Charlie Parker, uh, River Sand, and he came in there and he was talking about, he talked to somebody uh, that went to church and they'd never been to a revival. Their church doesn't have revivals. And uh, they said, you mean, he said they asked him, Said, you mean you go to church every day for a week? And he said, Yeah. He said, It's. They said, How do you do that? And he said, It's a privilege. And that's that's what he said. And, and from that, uh, the Lord began to deal with us today about this scripture that we had read Sunday evening. And uh, so that's what we're going to try <clears throat> to do this morning. We didn't study it just for a few minutes this evening, uh, but God wrote, give me four words, uh, and I wrote down in my Bible. We're going to look at that in a minute, and then we're going to try to preach. Uh, uh, through uh, the, the entire psalm, and we'll try to be as brief as we can. <clears throat> but we'll read beginning with verse number 1. It says, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. 
Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, and will, uh, uh, they will be still praising thee, Selah. <clears throat> Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca uh, maketh it a well. The rain also fill the pools. Uh, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For the day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God uh, than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. And that's reading the entire psalm. I, I don't usually read that much, but uh, we felt we should read it this uh, tonight. But let, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And we'll ask Brother Tracy in these prayers. Pray for us tonight. This this psalm, uh, I, I believe, and uh, I learned this evening, nobody really knows who wrote this psalm, but I, I believe it personally, and uh, I, I read this evening, some, all, most Bible scholars of time past believe this was a psalm of David, and I also believe that also because of verse number 9 when he says, O oh God, our shield look upon the face of thine anointed, and it's much like David's writing the psalms that we I uh, do know, and I, I'll say that. I, I'm like Brother Lance, uh, Lance said last night, I love the Psalms. Uh, if you ever get down and out, you just open your Bible to the book of Psalms somewhere and start reading, uh, and, and you'll be uplifted. I, I promise you that tonight, but what a blessing it is. But uh, we've got uh, such a, a, a great joy out of trying to study this this evening after we got home, and I'm going to try to share a few things with you that the Lord laid upon our heart, but... Uh, uh, as we said, uh, we, we were thinking about the privilege that we have to come to God's house. And I'm glad we uh, live where we do. Uh, I, I'm glad we do, and, I, and we're free to worship uh, the way we do. And I, I know that uh, probably one day we'll be tr uh, try to be taken from us. I, I don't doubt that. I, I, I don't doubt that at all. It wouldn't surprise me a bit. But I'm thankful that we're here tonight, and we do have this privilege to be in God's house. And we have... Uh, the freedom and the privilege to come uh, or schedule a, a, a series of revival services that we might come together as God's people uh, a, a, and worship the true and the living God. And it's really a privilege tonight, y'all. I tell you, and, I, I, and I've got such a joy. Now let me just try to share uh, this this morning. Uh, and I'll ask you tonight, do you really enjoy being in God's house? Uh, do you really enjoy being in God's house? And I don't believe... Uh, coming to God's house should be a chore. I don't believe we should look at it as that. And that's why, uh, that's what Charlie said this morning. He don't know this is what I'm preaching on. And when he said that it's a privilege, I thought, uh, man, it's just God's just, I've kind of been by myself a lot today and I, I've just kind of thought on that all day. What a privilege uh, it is to be in the house of God. And I know the reason that we had to read this Sunday evening and how I say that. But this is what David says. Now, now I'm going to look at the first verse. He says how... Uh, amiable, uh, he said, are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. And he's talking about uh, the house of God is what he's talking about. Is what, now we uh, <coughs> uh, know that, so that's what he's talking about. It's the house of God. And I believe uh, uh, the house of God is something we ought to love. Now you pray real hard that we can... Uh, uh, well, you know, these preachers can tell you when the Lord lays something on your heart, man, it's just so wonderful, but I can't never get it out like the Lord uh, lays it upon my heart. But I was so blessed uh, this afternoon as or this evening, and how I looked at that, and I, I thought about that, how I, a, admirable, I looked that word up, and it means uh, pleasant, lovely, or dear is what that word means. It's how uh, pleasant, how lovely, or how dear is the house of God is what, uh, the psalmist is saying here as he writes this, and I tell you why I believe it ought to be a place uh, that we love. I, I, I mentioned Sunday morning, now, now pray real hard, I mentioned Sunday morning my mother was here, and I said, uh, that's one place that I know I'm always welcome, and that's home, and I, I, and, and I'm, I mean that. It's the only, uh, I've only lived two places in my entire life. I, I, 
Uh, from the time I was born, I, I lived in the house that my mother still lives in today there. I, I grew up there, I was raised there, and I lived there till I was married. The only two places I've ever lived. We built a house a little over 22 years ago. I've lived in it ever since. But that, and uh, that's the second place I know that feels like home, and I know I'm welcome there. At least I hope I am. Uh, when I come home every evening, I, I, I know I am if Abby's home, but she acts like she hadn't seen me uh, in a week most every evening, I, and, and, and it's good to come home, you know, it really is, and how, uh, how, how uh, it, it's just a feeling that we have, isn't it, to be home, and with a, a couple of the men tonight in the prayer room were talking about stress, and I tell you what, uh, there's something that helps my stress every day, and that's when I get home. When I walk in the door, uh, it's just that smell that we have. You know, you can tell it's what you had for breakfast that morning if you did, or sometimes a home just has a certain smell. It really does, and that uh, that reminds me. I and, and I don't know where we're going with this, but it just came to my mind. I remember used to, uh, and, and I'm not. I'm trying to go where this kind of ties with Lance's message last night. But I remember I was telling. Uh, Michaela the other night, I, I hugged her and she said something about the way I smelled and I said uh, that always reminded me of home. I remember every day when Daddy came home, he, he worked up at uh, uh, Talon up there at the zipper plant for like 38 years is what he did there and every day he'd come home, he had that smell, you know, about him uh, and how I loved that smell when I was a little bitty boy and I don't know where that's going but I, I just thought of that and God put that in my heart there. I always loved the smell of the way um, the Daddy smelled, you know, when he's passed and gone now, uh, but a lot of times I'll get a whiff of something, it'll remind me of that, and I tell you what, uh, it reminds me of home is what it does, and I'd get off the school bus every day, uh, when I was a little boy, Daddy'd usually always be at home because he got off about 3 o'clock, but when I'd uh, walk in that house, I tell you what, there was a certain smell that I would smell there, uh, and I tell you what, it just kind of eased my worries, and I tell you what, uh, that's the way I believe the house of God ought to be, I really believe that, I believe uh, it ought to be a pleasant uh, smell to to us, or a, a pleasant savor, a pleasant thought when we think about God's house, and I'm uh, so thankful today that God's put us here, and I tell you what, I'm so thankful that I'm a child of God, and I tell you what, uh, one day I'm going to go home, I really am there, and I, but I tell you what, uh, as I've said many times, we uh, hear a lot of songs about heaven, uh, and about what it's going to be like when we get there, but I tell you what, it's pretty good here, uh, as I've said the song that the choir sings, it's just like heaven, uh, why, because Jesus is near. Uh, and I tell you what, I tell you something I love about God's house uh, uh, and I, I'm thankful that I have the privilege to be here. Now listen, I told you I wrote four words down in my Bible and I tell you what, uh, we ought to love the house of God like we love home. I, I say that and I, I believe if we're a child of God, uh, we ought to feel at home when we're in God's house. I believe we ought to uh, lay aside what people think about us and not worry about it and come and be ourselves. I really believe we uh, can do that. Why? Because uh, we're among God's children and I'll say that in a minute there and because we're at home is what we ought to be. I and Brother Charles is here and I love him with all my heart. I've told him I've told many times uh, since we've been here, Brother Charles used to preach me some when I uh, first started preaching and I, I appreciate that and I know y'all hated him leaving but I told uh, the church the first time I stepped out of the car here uh, and I knew God did, uh, this is where God had planned for us to be uh, because when my foot t uh, touched the asphalt out there I thought man and this feels like home. And why is that? Uh, because it's the house of God. And I tell you what, it's what uh, this place was founded upon. Uh, and like Brother Dennis' uh, uh, granddaddy told us here, standing here Sunday morning there, uh, he said he always loved coming here because it's down to earth there. Uh, it was real and you could hear the Word of God here. And that's what he told me there. And I thought, hallelujah, I'm glad uh, that that's the way I was raised. That's the kind of church I was raised in. And that's the kind of church I long to be in. Uh, it's a good old-fashioned country church. Now, I'm not against big churches. I'm not, but I tell you what, I don't like the idea of going to the house of God and sitting down beside somebody and I don't even know their name and they don't know my name and uh, you might sit in that same spot the next Sunday and they might not be there. And, I, and I don't, I'm not uh, against that, but don't you just love a good old country church uh, because we're like a family uh, and, and we feel at home. Now, let's like, and I've got to look at the Scripture in a minute. Now, you uh, pray for us, but I tell you what, we all love the God's house uh, like we love home. We ought to do that. Now, the next thing 
uh, on look about. We, we are uh, well, that's uh, really we've done curve the first two there. Uh, we are to love it like we love a uh, home. We ought to do that. Now I'll say the next thing that I wrote God's presence. I tell you what. Uh, now that's what inspired David. Uh, I believe David. I'll say the psalmist anyway. Uh, to write this psalm there was he desired to be in the house of God uh, that he uh, might experience the presence of God. Now it was a little different in that day uh, than it is. I don't believe God, God uh, was with people that believed in Him, but I don't believe He dwelt in them. I don't believe He dwelt within them uh, the way He does now. So we're, uh, we know that once we're saved, the Lord resides in us and uh, uh, He's ever present. But as I said the other night, uh, sometimes you just got to be in God's house uh, to experience what God has got for a group of people. I, I thought of the Scripture there uh, where Jesus said where two or three are gathered uh, in the midst. Uh, I mean, together in my name, there I am in the midst. He's actually talking about prayer. Uh, that's used out of context a lot. But I tell you what, I believe it can be applied to the house of God because uh, there's something special when God's people come together there uh, and we experience it together there. And that's what we ought to do. Uh, and that's what we all desire. Now, and now I look at verse number 2. He says, How admirable, how pleasant, how lovely, I dear, are thy tabernacles, he says, O Lord of hosts. Now look at verse number 2. He says, My soul, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord, is what he said. Uh, if, if the psalmist was David, uh, he had ever who the psalmist is, and I believe it was. Uh, now I know some of the psalms were written when David was on uh, the run from Saul. And the Bible even tells the superscriptions there uh, were actually with uh, uh, the Hebrew text when they were found. I tell you what, I've read that before in the past, but how? I tell you what, I, I, I believe ever who the psalmist was. I had a desire to be in the house of God, but something was keeping him from it. And that's why I, most, I mostly believe that it's David there, and it may have been uh, some time when he was running there uh, for his life there, and he desired to be in the house of God and could not. That's uh, what he did. But we ought to love uh, the house of God like our home uh, because it ought to be like home. Why? Because uh, we're a child of God and if it's His house, we ought to feel at home. Should we not? And that's what I said about my mama's house the other day. I, every time I go there, I know I'm welcome uh, and I know that I'm at home. Why? Because it's kinfolk. Uh, that's what it is. And I tell you what, that's the way it is when we come to the house of God. I'm one of His children and you're my brothers and sisters in Christ and there's nobody I'd rather spend time with than my family. Uh, and I tell you what, and I'm kind of getting into the next thing there. Uh, and I tell you what, that's what I love. We ought to love uh, uh, God's uh, uh, house like home. Uh, we ought to love God's house because it is home. Uh, and then I look at this, and we ought to love uh, uh, God's presence and desire the presence of God. Uh, and that's what I'm wanting this week. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed for months there. And you asked Brother Lance, I think I called him in January, uh, to come there because God's had him on my heart for a long time uh, to come here and help us at Mount Olive. And why is that? Because I desire to see the presence of God here at this place. And He has been. And He was here tonight. But I tell you what, I long for the day. And I've, I've been in it. I told you a million times, I've been in church all my life. And I tell you what, I've been in some services there uh, that were so wonderful, it scared me. Uh, when I was a little boy, I remember we used to go to the New Bridge Baptist Church. That was where uh, my mama was raised there in Chattahoochee. They, uh, uh, I think uh, New Bridge had service first and third. Uh, Chattahoochee had service second and fourth. And my mama was raised in two churches. My grandparents were buried, uh, buried at Chattahoochee Baptist Church. But I tell you what, I'd go, we'd go to revival there. And I tell you what, they'd have the, uh, some meetings, Barnett Crane and uh, Lawton Crane, some of them, they'd get in the Holy Ghost. And I tell you what, the uh, Holy Ghost had come down. And I tell you, It'd scare me to death. Uh, but I remember after I got saved, we'd go sit on the bench with Grandmother at Revival, and I tell you what, something was different. Uh, when I, the Holy Ghost had come near, I tell you what, I felt like I was just at home, uh, and I wanted to see more of that. And I tell you, I long to see that today. I long to see the altars filled, and we've had two nights when the altar had a lot of people in them. Uh, but I tell you what, I'd like to see the altar full of lost people getting saved. Uh, I really would, and that, because that's what we need. And that's what we need to do is, as the psalmist did here, a uh, desire to see the, uh, the, uh, the presence of God so much that it causes us to be faint. Uh, have you ever wanted anything so bad uh, that it caused you to be faint? I tell you what, you fast and you pray until you get to the point you can. I tell you what, God will give us what we need. Uh, listen to what the Bible tells in Psalm 63 and verse number 1. It says, O oh God, uh, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. Um, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land. I tell you what, uh, sometimes God allows us to get dry where we might get thirsty. I told Brother Charlie this morning, he asked me something, and I said, well, the Bible says in Psalm 107,
27, verse number 9 said, it says, For God uh, satisfies the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. I said, so if we ain't hungry and we're not longing, He ain't giving us nothing. Uh, and he's not. I tell you what, that's why, that's what it takes to have revival. We got a hunger and we got a thirst for it. That's what Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter number five. He says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. He said, For they shall be filled, is what he said. Uh, so if we're not hungry we're, and desire to see God and Him work, we're not going to get it. Now, I ain't spit and slobbered a long time when I'm preaching. Uh, so I appreciate you praying tonight. I like that. I like it when people pray to sit too close. I'm uh, afraid they'll get spit on. But I tell you, you just pray tonight. Uh, but I tell you what, uh, when the Holy Ghost comes down and we get right with God, uh, we can all spit and slobber a little bit. I tell you, we need to do that. Now let's look uh, at the next thing I'll say. Uh, now why do we love, why does it feel like home? Uh, I, I said we uh, want to live like home. I just wrote this down in my Bible in a red pen. You look at it right there at the top. Uh, that's what it looks like. Uh, it, it says our uh, uh, love home, because, uh, like home, because it is our house. Uh, and desire God's presence, and the reason we do is because we love God's people. Don't you love being with God's people? I tell you what, there's a, uh, there's a lot of things I love to do, but as far as the social life, I ain't got one outside of church. Uh, why? Because it's God's people that I desire to be with. It is there, and I'm the same way my home church. I love to visit my home church. I ain't never got tired of those people. They might be tired of me, uh, but I love to be with them people. I, I, I love to be with them people. I do, and I love to be here uh, with you people. I really do. I mean that with all my heart, and I'm not uh, saying that to butter you up, but I've never loved a group of people uh, any less or any more than I have loved y'all. I mean that with all my... Uh, never, never any more. Never felt any more at home in my life, and I know that. It is because we're knit together as the souls of David and Jonathan there. Uh, and, and I tell you what, I believe our, our brothers and sisters in Christ will be our best friends. Uh, and I know they are. And, and, and I'll say this tonight, if you ever need me, you call me. I'll be there. I'll make, I'll make it a point to be there uh, unless I'm provincially hindered, to, uh, providentially hindered some way. Uh, and, I, and I know the same would go for y'all. If I need y'all, I know I can call y'all. Uh, there's men at my home church, I wouldn't care to call them in the middle of the night because I know they'd be there for me. And they know the same thing. Uh, man, I tell you what, them Thomas boys and I, uh, the, uh, the Palmers and all them that go there, I tell you what, they're kin, by the way. Uh, but I'll say this, I, I can depend on them. I, I can. Man, I tell you what, we've spent in many a night, the Brotherhood at Mount View Baptist Church, uh, fishing. We, we went for 20-something years, two nights a year, and stayed up all night fishing. And I tell you what, we created a bond and a, a fellowship, but I tell you, that'll last till we go to our grave. And I, that's what we're creating here too. Do you know that? I tell you, whatever church I've ever been, thank God I've left in better shape, or God's left in better shape than it was when I got there. And, and I tell you what, why is that? Uh, because of the fellowship that we had with one another. And I tell you, we had one purpose, and that was to worship and serve the true and the living God and none, none other above Him. And I tell you what, that's why it comes together. Now, I'll say this. Now, I thought of this as you do. We ought to take care of God's house as if it was our home. Do you believe that? I really do. Now, now, uh, now I've done, done a couple of things around here around the church, and some people say, you oughtn't to do that. I tell you what. Uh, when, I, when I came to Mount Olive Church the first time, as I said, I don't view it. Now, I've read the church history. I know who donated the land. I know who built the building, all this. But I don't consider it Mount Olive Baptist Church. I consider it God's church. I consider it God's Baptist church. And I tell you what, if there's something around the house of God needs to be done, I'll be glad to do it. And I'll show you something in a minute in this Scripture there. And, I, and that's, what, that's the way I, I view my home church. I've been to my home church and done things. I've, been to, I've done something in every church I've ever been in uh, just to help out. Why? Because it's God's house. Uh, when I pull up on the uh, place, son, I want to take my shoes off. Uh, why is that? Because I know it's holy ground and I know God owns this place and I know it's His house and I tell you what, I love doing anything I can to take care of. And I tell you what, this is his flock and I'll do all I can to take care of you. And if I ever lead you astray, it'll be unknowingly. I can promise you that today. Uh, and I mean that. Why? Because I love you. And I love God's house. And because this is my home, it's where God's got me for right now. And I tell you what, I count it as home. Now we've got to look at the Scripture. We're going to be here all night. Uh, Lord, I done been up here how long? I, my watch is upside down there. I done been up here almost 25 minutes. Man, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, now listen... Uh, so he says, how, how, how lovely, how pleasant 
Uh, and how dear is the house of God? Is it to you today? Is it to you? I know it is. Now listen, just for a minute. Uh, and he says, my soul longs for it, uh, for the courts of the Lord. Now what does that mean? Uh, now, now in the days of the tabernacle, in the days of the, of the temple there, there was a court outside. It was kind of gated, kind of like a gated area there. Uh, and it, it, it was for the Gentiles is what it was. Uh, now, I don't hardly understand that, uh, the psalmist being a Jew. Why, and I didn't read it. I didn't have time. Uh, but I tell you what, he desired uh, to be as close to the tabernacle of God as he could get, even if he's on the outside. I'll show you something in a minute that I've seen this evening in this Scripture. Now, you look at uh, So that's what he said, for the courts of the Lord. It's what he's talking about. Y'all know you men that study your Bible, uh, you know that, the outer court. I believe that's what he's talking about. It's not talking about a court like a... a municipal court or nothing. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the outer court of the house of God. That's what he's talking about. And the psalmist longed for that. And he said, and I've done read I'm not even going to read the rest of verse 2 again. I told somebody the reason I preach so long, I'll read a verse and I'll read a verse and God show me something. I'll read it and read it and read it. So finally he don't show me nothing and I go to the next verse. Uh, and that's what the problem is. Uh, but we ain't going to read that no more tonight because we might see something. We might be here all night. Now, now look at verse number 3. Now this is, boy, I mean the Holy Ghost come in the room this evening. And listen, look what he says. In verse 3 he says, Yea, the sparrow has found an house, and, a, and the swallow a nest for herself, for she may lay her young. Now buddy, that sounds like Lance last night, don't it? And I read that this evening. See, God's got a plan for this, y'all. Uh, he's got a plan for this thing to work together for good. You believe that? Amen. Uh, and I read that this evening and I thought about that. Now look what he says there. He says, Yea, the sparrow. Now, uh, in the shop where I've been working a few days, them old barn martins are everywhere. And every time you paint something, you got to run them out because they're going to mess on them. I started to say poo, but I don't probably hard to say that. But they do. They're messing all over everything. You know, and you got to clap your hands and run them out. You know, Shut the door and make sure they don't get back in That's what you've got to do. Uh, but I tell you what, I thought of that this evening when I read that. I tell you what, they, these birds, uh, they loved being at the house of God too. Did they not? Uh, that's what they did there. And I tell you what, why did they do that? Uh, because it was a place of refuge. I tell you what, uh, Brother Lance talked about the home being a place of refuge. Uh, but I tell you what, the church is a place of refuge today too, is it not? Uh, because there's a lot of uh, uh, mess going on in the world today. There's a lot I don't agree with. The leaders of our country are turning this place upside down. Uh, but I tell you what, the house of God is some place we can go. We shut the doors and get away from it, ain't it? And ain't you glad for that? And that's the way my home is too. I tell you what, we shut the doors to that stuff. Uh, we really do. And I'll say, I'll say tonight, uh, I tell you what, uh, that's what that bird did. If they'd build a nest uh, in the trees like most birds, I'm about to lose my voice. I ain't preached this hard in a while. Uh, but I'll say this. Now, uh, the wind could have blown a nest out. How many times have you been in the yard there and find a bird's nest? I've done it many a time. Uh, where the wind had blew it out. I tell you what, uh, 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 the animals, everything. But I tell you what, uh, they found a place of refuge and maybe in the eaves or something of God's house. And I tell you what, uh, the psalmist saw that and he thought if the birds want to be here, I want to be here. That's what he thought and that's what the birds did there. And I'll tell you this, uh, where, where, what better place uh, uh, to raise your children than the house of God, as Lance said last night. And why? Because it's a place of refuge. Now, there's a lot of people, and there may be some here, uh, that are homeschooling their kids and that's good and they're fine. Uh, but I tell you what, our, my kids went to public school, uh, but I tell you what, it's not in the... Uh, it's not in our school, and uh, it's not res uh, the school's responsibility to raise and to teach our children. If we'll do our job in the home, I'll say that. If we'll do our job in the house of God, God will take care of our children. Uh, but I mean, the day's getting worse now. I'm, I'm not I'm knocking somebody homeschooling their kids. I'm not saying that. The day's getting so bad, I'd probably do it nowadays. Uh, because even from the time Michaela was a little kid, I mean, these things going on in school that I... I mean, it just ain't there. I, I mean, I oughtn't be there. I, I'll say that, but i tell you what, I believe God and take care of them. Do you not? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Amen, I do. I do. And, and, and that's what this bird saw. Not only a place of refuge. Look at the Scripture for herself, but a place to have her young. Hallelujah. Is that not wonderful uh, to see this? Now, let's look at this. Uh, we'll go through the Scripture real quick. Uh, uh, so, uh, it says that she may lay her young and, and, and even thine altars. Evidently, it's near the altar, I, I, according to that. Uh, Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Now listen, uh, blessed are they, <clears throat> listen, uh, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Now, 
Now, what, what does the word dwell mean? It means to reside. It means to live. It means to live there. It's what it means. It's what it means. What does the Bible say in Psalm 91? Uh, 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 and listen to what it says. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. It, it's what it says. It's what, uh, that means to take up residence in. Now see, that's what, uh, that's what he says. Blessed are they that dwell, that dwell. And I know you do. Y'all, y'all, y'all are faithful. You are. I, 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 I've uh, uh, told you the last two nights, y'all done, guy had a great turnout. Uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, but there are some people that just visit God's house occasionally. Are they not? Uh, Brother Ronnie's talking about somebody don't ain't got a clue who it was uh, that used to come and don't no more and they need to be back in. There's a lot of people just visit God's house on a weekly basis. But I tell you what, it's some place we never leave, I don't believe. Uh, we, we never leave the presence of God. And I tell you what, we need to dwell. We need to live. I tell you what, I, I, now, now Christ is our life. What does Paul say in Philippians 1.21? He says, For to me, to Paul... To live is Christ and to die is gain. And I believe that ought to be our motto as all Christians. Our life ought to be Christ. But I tell you what, church ought to be our lifestyle. You think not? I, th- I think so. I really do. It ought to be our lifestyle. If we come, we ought to live it. Uh, and I know you do there, but, but that's what he says. Blessed are they that dwell in the house, uh, they will be still praising thee. That's what he said. Now look, verse number 5. i got to hurry. Uh, listen, listen to what he says. He says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca will make it a well. Uh, that's what he said. Now, now let's look at this just for a second. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. Where does our strength come from? From the Lord, ultimately. Now, I'm, I'm going to try to go somewhere if we can, uh, if my brain don't fail me there. And the Holy Spirit, now listen to what he said, and I know he won't. He says, blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, is what he said. Now, I looked up, uh, uh, the word strength in my concordance. Second, uh, if I wrote my reference down, uh, Second Timothy chapter four and verse number seventeen. I, I know what the verse is, but I'm gonna read it. I used to could quote it, but I probably can't now. My quoter don't like work like it used to all the time. Now listen what he says there. He said, "My first answer: No man stood with me, but all men forsook me." Paul writing to Timothy there. I pray to God that it be not laid to their charge. He said, "Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me." Now that's what God does for us. He gives us strength to go. Brother Lance is talking about how many revivals he's got uh, preaching. I, I've done that before too. You wore out, but God just gives you a supernatural strength to do it. He does. To, he empowers us to do His work. The Bible says, that, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. He can give us strength to do so. That's what he does. And that's what He says. He says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. Now look what He says. Uh, 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 whose heart is are, are the ways of them. But now look at verse number 10. Uh, I, I, and I just drawed an arrow. Uh, I mean, I, mean I, I got me a blue line and I circled both of them, draw, hung them together. That's what I did. That's what I do when I study. God has show me something. Uh, and that's what, so uh, whose strength is in thee. Now why is that? Because when we pass through the valley of Baca, now what does that mean? It means a dry and barren land. If we'll rely upon God for our strength when we do pass through a dry and a barren land, we'll have water. We'll have water. We really will. What, what did God do? And uh, what, what did God do for the children in the, uh, uh, the wilderness? Gave them water out of a rock, did He not? And I tell you what, that represents Christ uh, uh, giving us living water. It's what that does, what that represents, and how. Uh, and if we'll uh, do what he says, if we'll rely upon the Lord for our strength, when we get in a dry and barren land and we think we can't make it, God will supply what we need uh, for us to make it. He, he'll do that for us. Uh, and, and that's what he says. Now, now, now look at this. And, and when we do get weak, if we'll rely upon the Lord for strength, uh, he'll, he'll make the desert uh, blossom with the rose. You know, the Bible talks about that and how... Uh, he, 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 he'll make it blossom. He'll make a barren desert blossom. That's what he does. But now I'll say this. I thought, I thought of this. And like I said, those four words I wrote down in my Bible. What, where else do I get strength? From you. From you. Where do you get strength? Hopefully from me occasionally. I, I'll say that when you're feeling low. I, I, I appreciate when sometimes when you, uh, you preach a message and somebody will come up to you, you're crying, you know, and they'll say, well, that was for me. You know, I, that just encouraged me so much. And that's what I'm here for. But did you, do you know why you're here? Preachers get down and out too, don't they? These preachers will tell you. Preachers get down and out. In fact, I, I don't think nobody on earth gets more down and out than a preacher. You look at the prophets of old. Who got down and out and discouraged? You look at Elijah. You look at 
uh, uh, Jonah, all of these prophets. I mean, they'd get so bad, they'd just say, God, go ahead and take me. I can't take no more. It's what happened. And I've been there. I really have. I ain't been there in a long time. I say that God's been good to me, but I went through uh, some dry spells, and I tell you what, I relied upon the Lord for my strength, and He lifted me up, and He gave me a drink of water. You, oh, man, I just thought about Elijah. What happened to Elijah there? He, he just... Uh, come off of a high there. They'd defeated the prophets of Baal or, uh, Baal or God had there. Uh, and I tell you what, they'd, they'd uh, altered uh, uh, that was soaked with water, been consumed with fire. I tell you what, but what happened right after that? He got down and out, did he not? And I tell you what, the, uh, the Bible tells us, and I ain't read that in a long time, but I'll try. Oh, uh, you know what the story says. The Bible said he went out in the wilderness because Jezebel promised she's going to kill him. And I tell you what, uh, he believed it, and he got down and out and discouraged, did he not? And I tell you what, what happened there? He fell asleep there, and the Bible says uh, that, that God woke him up. Uh, God woke him up there, and I tell you what, uh, the birds had brought stuff for him to eat, and God uh, fed him, God watered him, and sustained him. And he says, uh, what does God ask Elijah? He says, what doest thou here, Elijah? What you doing down and out? Uh, look what I just done is what he says. Uh, and he says, well, I'm the only one left serving God. And he said, I believe there's 7,000 uh, that is not yet bowed the knee to Baal. Get up from there is what he said. And I tell you what, that's what we need sometimes. If we'll, uh, we need to be lifted up not only uh, by, uh, but from each other, but I tell you what, God has to prod us sometimes. He really does. Uh, he has to do that. And I'm thankful that He does that. Now let's look at it. Uh, so when we get down and out, uh, we rely on the strength of God, but I rely upon you. And that's why I love coming to the house of God on Sundays and Wednesdays. I tell you, it's not a, it's not a chore. It's not a chore. And, I, and like I say, I've been all my life and it ain't never been a chore. I ain't never said, Mama, I want to stay at home. Uh, I tell you what, you didn't have a choice. Uh, when I, we've heard people talk about the drug problem. I tell you what, now I got drugged to church. I really did. But I enjoyed it. And I'm glad my children's got drugged to church. I ain't never give them much choice where they... Uh, but I ain't, never, I ain't never had to make them come. Um, they enjoy it. And, and I just thank God that I, uh, I, I might have done something right. Uh, and it's just because they know I love the Lord and they know I love His house and I know I love His people. They know I love His people. And that's what makes it good. Now, now we got to go. Now look what he says. Verse number 7. Sunday to Wednesday. I thought of this as I read this. Now look, if we'll uh, rely upon the Lord for His strength, the, the desert valley, it'll be well watered. One place in Isaiah says that. I... I, I, I wish I could think where it's at. I'd turn there and read it for you. It's a wonderful passage of Scripture. Uh, it, it, the valley is well watered. Now look what it says in verse 7. And they go, those that dwell... Now what are we talking about? Those that dwell in God's house and, and rely upon the strength of the Lord. Uh, 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 the valley, a uh, desert valley will, uh, will be uh, uh, not barren. It'll be fruitful. It'll be watered. Now look what it says. And then he says, they go from strength to strength. Now what does that mean? I don't know what it means. I'll just be honest. But I thought of this evening when I read it. I make it to Wednesday because of Sunday. The strength that I receive when I come to God's house, I, I, I make it to church on Wednesday because of what I got on Sunday. I hope you do too. And, and I tell you what, I make it to Sunday because of what I got on Wednesday. And that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Now, I don't know if that's what that means. That's what the Lord laid on my heart when I read that this evening. That's what happens. We go from strength on Wednesday and we start going down a little bit and by Sunday, man, we get strength again. And see, that's why we need to be in God's house. These people go to church one Sunday a month. How in the world do they make it? I said we uh, ain't used to. I tell you what, I, don't, I probably went for 10 years and did not miss a Sunday in church. And I'm not bragging. I was pastor at that time. If we went on vacation, we'd leave on Sunday night or Monday maybe uh, and come back on Saturday. last couple of years, we've actually missed. And I missed, uh, you know, we went on vacation a month or so ago uh, with my family. And I told you, we was going to uh, lunch that Sunday about a quarter to twelve. And I looked at Tina and the kids as we was driving to lunch. And I said, what would life will be, be without God and without going to His house on Sunday? I said, it would be meaningless. I felt so out of place. Uh, we went in in Captain D's and we got there a little bit after 12, I guess it was. I don't remember where we was at, some Franklin, North Carolina, or somewhere where we was at. And I tell you what, uh, people started coming in with their church clothes on and I felt plumb sick in the pit of my stomach. Why? Because I went on vacation to miss church. You saying that's wrong? No, I'm not. But I tell you what, I know where I'm supposed to be. Uh, and I tell you what, I've been to church on vacation. You ever done that? I remember we went to uh, Jekyll Island one time. 
Now we, we been, went probably 10 years in a row, and there's a little old Baptist church, there's like a Pentecostal, and they, they, if you ever been to Jekyll, ain't much there. And there's like a Methodist church and a Baptist. I picked the Baptist, of course. Uh, but uh, anyway, I went in there, and the guy asked me where I was at, and before I, and I didn't mean to tell him I was a preacher. He asked me what I did, and I thought he was going to make me preach. Uh, I really did. He's an older guy, and he just lived there in, in the summertime, and he was kind of like their summertime pastor. And he, boy, he gets me up, introduces me in front of everybody to kind of a little small church. You know. uh, but I tell you what, it was wonderful that morning. I didn't preach. I wasn't going to preach. There ain't no way. Uh, but it, uh, but uh, uh, and Tina and the kids didn't even go with me. I went by myself. You know, and I, uh, uh, but why is that? Because I, I, I've missed going to church. I, I tell you what, I've missed going to church, and I've done that, and it's a good thing. Uh, and it's just something God put in my heart to be in His house. Got to hurry. Uh, strength to strength. Skip a Sunday. Can't hardly make it two weeks without doing it. Now let's look. Uh, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion of Christ for God. We're just going to read, run through this real quick. Uh, o oh Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O oh God of Jacob. Uh, Selah, which means to pause and think on what you just read uh, or what you just thought. He says, Behold, O oh God, our shield. Look upon the face of thine anointed. That's why I believe it's King David. Don't know that. But that's just my personal opinion. But now look at verse number 10. Verse number 10. Then we're going to close this thing in a minute. Lord, we've probably been up here two hours, ain't we? Uh, now listen. He says, for, now listen. What's he thinking about? Missing God's house and having a desire to be there. Having a desire to be there. Now look what he says. Verse 10, he says, For a day in thy courts are better than a thousand. That's what he says. Now, I thought of this this evening. I didn't get my calculator and figure it out. But a thousand days would be pretty close to three years, wouldn't it? be pretty close to that. Just, I, I, it's just a, a, a you know, a pretty close guess. Now, what if I'll say this. I thought of this. And, and you tell, I, I have some weird thoughts sometimes, but I'll say this. I thought of this. What if this psalmist, whoever it is, if it's David, somebody gave him three years to live if he didn't ever go to God's house? But he gave him one day to live if he'd go to God's house. What would he choose? Now, I've never looked at it. Have you ever looked at it that way? That's, that's what he's saying. If I had the choice to live three years and not go to God's house, now that ought to bless your heart. I sat there this evening and I, and I just began to cry when I read that. And I tell you, folks, I might be in the Holy Spirit right now and say something that I can't back up, but I'll tell you what, if I had the choice of living one day and being in God's house or living three years and never stepping foot again, son, I'd take the one day. And I mean that with all my heart. I, I mean that. God knows my heart today, and I mean that. And my kids know I mean that. And I hope y'all know I mean that. And I know God knows I mean that. That's how I love the house of God. That's how I love to be with God's people. That's how I love to be in the presence of my God. Uh, why is that? Because I love Him and I love His house. And I tell you what, I, I told you, I, I told my wife, I, the Lord dealt with me about three years about calling to, about my calling to preach, and I swear on the Bible, uh, right laying right before me, I never run from the call to preach. I promise you I never run from it. Uh, but I wanted to be sure. I've told you this and I've told it before. I wanted to be sure when God called me to preach and I surrendered that I wasn't quitting. Uh, I, I talked to a friend of mine the other day, a friend of his uh, uh, announced his call to preach, and he said, I believe that is going to stick. And I thought, I, I, I hope it does. I really do that. Uh, and I told my wife the night before I announced my call to preach, I'd went and talked to people. Uh, I'd talked to deacons. I'd talked to my daddy. I'd talked to my wife. I'd talked to my mama. I'd talked to my brother. I'd talked to my sister. I'd talked to everybody about it. And I said, Daddy, I don't think the Lord... I said, I've never been felt to tell it. He said, Son, you'll know when you're supposed to. And I tell you what, the night before I surrendered, I called a preach and told it at Mount View Baptist Church on a Thursday night. I told my wife, I said, Honey, this is going to change our lives. And I said, and I said it's going to be a sacrifice from here on out. Uh, that's what we did. We laid our life upon the altar. And I tell you what, we sacrificed ourselves for God. And I tell you what, I meant for it to stick. And that's the only reason I waited three years. That's the only reason I waited uh, three years. I wanted to be sure. God give me time to study. I told you that's all I done for three years was read my Bible. I went to seminary in my study at home. I did that. Uh, and I tell you, because I, I told somebody I couldn't preach it if I didn't know it. And, and that's what I done. I studied, I mean, I mean every waking minute. That's all I done was study my Bible. And I'll say this today. It's been the best road I've, I could have ever taken. Why? Because it was a plan 
uh, the providence that God had for my life uh, to try to uh, do my very best to lead a congregation of people there to love God's house like I love it. Uh, and, I'm not try- and I'm not trying to lift up, and I'm just sharing my heart tonight uh, because that's where my heart's at, is at God's house and in God's, uh, with God's people. And then, now look at it. Now, now that, so, so one day, he, he said, in thy courts is better than a thousand. I hope you look at that a little different from now on. I did. I'd never seen it like that. And I, I believe that's what he meant. If he was given the choice, he'd take a day in the Lord's house. Now let's look at uh, uh, the, the latter part of this verse. And, and then we'll, we'll try to close. And I ain't got a clue. Y'all pray. And look what he says. He says, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in. Now you, you circle that. I don't have my pen with me. It's right there in my coat. Than to be in the house of the Lord. And I told Brother Lance last night, when I'm studying for a message, I do not read commentary. I, I don't. I don't. Because I told him last night, I, I feel God's perfectly capable. Now, I read other things, other times. I do that. But I did this seed. And I looked that up trying to see what that meant right there. And I, and I know what a doorkeeper is. But I'll say this. Uh, to best of my, the best that I could find out, that meant I'd rather be a doorkeeper at the house of God and never go in. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. I'd rather be outside keeping the door and never be able to step foot inside the threshold than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Now, buddy, that's something to see right there, ain't it? Hey, it is there. Had you, had you rather be there? Hey, hadn't you, what, what, just to be close? And I believe that's what the psalmist is saying here. A, a, a day in thy courts. Now see, I didn't see that till right then. God just showed me that. A day in thy courts is... But what, what, did, what did he say at the first there? Uh, the courts of the Lord. That's not in the house of God. That's near the house of God. Uh, and that's what he said. A day in thy courts are better than a thousand. Uh, to be near the house of God. If I understand that correctly. These men correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but that's what the court was. It, it was actually part of the tabernacle. Uh, but, but it was... Uh, not in the building, not in the tent, and that's what it was, and that's what it, and that's what he's saying here. I'd rather be a doorkeeper outside, keeping the door, whether that means opening it for people to go in or what, than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. And I'll, I'll hallelujah that tonight. There's a lot of things in the world I enjoy, a lot of things in the world I enjoy doing, but I tell you what, a child of God's got no business in the tent of wickedness. It, what does that mean? Living there. That's what it means. Right, that's what he's talking about, dwelling. See, I'm, just, I'm learning as I go, y'all. I, I, I get up here and God will show me stuff I ain't never seen before. How He'll tie stuff together amazes me. That's what He's talking about is dwelling. And I've never seen that till right now. That's what He's talking about is dwelling. Being there. Dwelling in the house of God. And that's what I'd rather do. I'd rather be on the outside of God's house and can't go in than to dwell, to live, in the tent of wickedness. Now, I tell you, that's amazing, ain't it? I ain't never seen that. That's amazing, ain't it? How God can open your eyes to something. And that's what He's talking about here. And I'll ask you tonight, as we close, do you have the desire to be here like you should have? And I know you do. Y'all been so faithful. I, I prayed today. I, I prayed for y'all today. Do you know that? I prayed. I, I was standing on an old loader today. And, and uh, that, well, that sander was running, it was loud, and I, 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 I just prayed. I, so I like to do loud things because you get your earphones on, you just think, meditate. That's what I do all the time. Cutting grass, I, about every message I ever got is on my lawnmower with them headphones on. Just something about that buzz, that, that vibration it makes my brain work, makes my heart open up. It does. I, uh, but I tell you what, that's why I prayed for you all. And I, I said, God bless male knowledge for being so faithful to attend church tonight. I, 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 I prayed that for you today. Y'all been as faithful as I've ever seen a church as far as revival. And, and there's a couple here that would be here tonight if it wasn't for sick. The church would be full. And I, I, and I praise you for that. But I know that's because you love being in God's house. You love being with God's people and you love this place like you love your home. Do you not? You love this place like you love your home. I do. I, I do. I mean, that's nice. If you'll stand to your feet, they'll come with a song. I don't have a clue how to close this. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm read this last verse. Y'all pray real hard. I hate this part. Y'all know I do. I, I love to preach, but the invitation makes me so nervous I don't know what to do. But I know God does. I'll say this. I want Brother Lance to come out here. 
I'm going to read this last verse and I'm going to close. He says, For the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. God will give us what we need. God will give us what we need. Now I'll say this, and, I'm so, and I'll say to the parents this week, all these kids that are here tonight, and Dennis and his family, and all, all the kids, that now, Jerry, all, uh, John, everybody's got their kids here. Now, I'll thank you. I, I, Jennifer, her, all the kids. Everybody's got kids. Don't watch me start calling names and leave somebody out. I appreciate you having your kids here. Because of the Scripture. That I told you little ones has been on my heart this week. I told you what I read Sunday evening about the little ones or, or whatever day it was. About the little ones. That yesterday evening. I appreciate you having your kids here. Because it's where you want to be and, and it's where your kids need to be. Just like the bird. Just like the bird. She, the, the, the mother sparrow, she knew where she needed to be. And she knew where she needed to have her kids. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Ain't God good? Ain't God good that He gives us the opportunity to be here? And I'll tell you kids tonight. I want all the kids in the church listen to me. I love you. I love these kids. I, I tell you, like my own kids. Like... Lance said last night, I love my kids. I do. But I love everybody's kids like all of my The kids you see on the news that are uh, 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 mistreated and uh, uh, abused and abandoned, it just breaks my heart. It does. Because I love children. Jesus, you read uh, uh, Mark chapter number 10. Jesus took the little kids up into His arms and said, uh, Suffer the little children to come unto Me for such is the kingdom of God. Is what He says. And except we become as little children, we can't enter the kingdom of God. But you listen to me, kids. You, you, when your mom and daddy get up and go to church, you go with them. You hear me? I want you to have, and I appreciate these kids doing that. You don't stay at home. You don't stay at home. I have my favorite TV shows on. You be in the house of God. I want you to do that. And parents, I'll say to you, you don't stay home, watch your favorite TV show. Neither. I don't care if Walker, Texas Rangers on, and that's your favorite show. You get up and come to the house of God when it's open, when the doors is open. You need to do that. Uh, and, and I appreciate you having your kids here this week. And I appreciate our discovery program. The kids that come on Wednesday night, and there's a lot of them don't even attend this church uh, that come, but it's my intention to get them attending. That's the reason for it, folks, is to get people saved, get kids saved, and get them in the house of God. And if that's what it takes to get their mom and daddy saved and in the house of God, that's what we'll do. Uh, and, and I know that's kind of a bold statement, but it's kind of backwards nowadays. Used to, the mom and daddies get saved, get their kids saved. Now it's have, we haven't turned around and get the kids saved, so the mom and daddies are getting church. And, that's, and if that's what it takes, that's what we'll do. Because we, we want to see them all saved. We won't be like my family. Like the song Michaela, Abby sung there. When we get home, we're all going to be there. <laughs> Hallelujah. God saved me. He saved my wife. And he saved both my children. And I'll tell you, every, every member of my immediate family, not even my nieces and nephews, every one of them saved. And we're all going to spend eternity together. And you'll get tired of me, I know. But I'm going to be there, and you're going to be there, and we're going to have a ball. <clears throat> I heard Brother Les say that. And I'm going to shut up a minute. I promise that. What time is it? How long have we been up here? Three hours? About 50 minutes. I apologize. But I'll say this. One night, we, uh, I can't remember where it was, except beside Les at Revival somewhere. And somebody said there won't be no preaching in heaven. He elbowed me in the ribs. He said, Buddy, I'm going to be preaching. <clears throat> That's what Les said. And, and I said, I am too. Because you read the book of Revelation, chapter number 5, we're all going to be preaching and singing. We're going to be praising Him. We're going to be praising the Lord, Jesus Christ, for what He done. We're going to be saying, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Uh, uh, out of every kindred and tongue and nation and people, uh, you can read the Bible there. Because He, he was slain for us. And I, I usually quote that, but my quoter just quit. But, but you know, we're not going to. This as they sing, if you need to be saved, you come to this altar tonight. Because I tell you what, God is the only refuge that you'll ever have. Not only from the world, but did you know that God is a refuge from Himself? Now, now let me make myself clear. The only escape you'll have from the wrath of God is in God Himself. See, now see, see He's not only the wrath, but He's the refuge from the wrath. And, and getting in the family of God through the new birth 
by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior is the only way you'll ever escape that. You come to this altar tonight and get saved. You need to. If you're a child of God and you've uh, gone cold on Him, don't love God's house, you come to this altar. And I, I pray He puts the desire in your heart that you need tonight as they sing.